In 1944, on the campus of Duke University, many of the school's prominent students were off fighting World War II, and doctors from the School of Medicine were now part of the sports teams. Also at this time, there was a strong division socially between whites and blacks. Just three miles from Duke, black students attended their own school, the North Carolina School for Negroes, and any thoughts of intercollegiate matches against Duke would be unthinkable. A bold challenge was issued. Sort of issued a, a challenge that uh, we were kind of the best in North Carolina, we thought. It was decided that they would come to our school. It would be easier and uh, they could camouflage it better. So on this quiet Sunday morning, while most of Durham, North Carolina was attending church, the unthinkable happened as whites and blacks met in a locked gym for the sake of the sport of basketball. Duke and North Carolina College are only three miles apart, but they really live and they might as well be in separate solar systems. Got onto this campus, which we didn't even know was there, had never seen it before. It was some distance from uh, Duke University. We pulled into the campus and we looked around and said, well, I guess we're going to play here. I would have to say I was a little shook up. Nobody saw them. Nobody till this day knows when they left their automobiles and went to that gym. But they got out of their car and did a coat sword. Head went in the gym. We locked it up. We had on jackets and then we pulled our jackets up over our head as we walked into the gym. They come over here and they, they're from Duke on the other side of town. They don't know anything about us except they're courageous enough to come over here and play us. Knowing how feelings were, the law and everything, uh, it, it frightened the heck out of me. We kind of looked at each other and said, well, we're here to play basketball, let's play basketball. <laughs> In the back of my mind, there's always a desire to have a good team ready for the possibility of uh, integration. Legendary coach John McClendon was indeed prepared for that special day because he was a former student of the game's founder, Dr. James Naismith. We came out with our fast-breaking style, and nothing meshed, just nothing. It was obvious that you know, that was a lot of nervousness. They had built up a big lead in the first five minutes until uh, we found out that uh, you know nobody was going to get hurt and the black wouldn't rub off or the white wouldn't rub off and they were ball players and that's when we went to work. Those fellas just beat the heck out of us. They, uh, they were very, very good. After the game was over, we uh, had a second game after we'd been beaten and we split up and uh, we played uh, together. Two or three black guys and two or three white guys on each team and, and we played some more just you know, for the fun of it. And that was really the ultimate at the time. That was real. That's the way basketball's supposed to be.